friends, welcome back to another episode. That was the first full static test fire of the reusable rocket engine, but it didn't perform as expected. Here is a close up view of the part that suffers the most significant damage in that test fire, with the arrow showing the impact of the pressures on that part of the nozzle. This thing was in the forward end and it too came off, and the rear one went into pieces. After close observation as to why it happens and how to fix it would be the focus of this video. As the pressure builds up in the combustion chamber, the nozzle which was held by four screws and epoxy glue did retain their farm grip. But the part of the cylinder on which they were attached was what got torn, pushed out, and off the motor accompanied by the two running flames in the rear. To fix this problem, we are going to have to revisit the success we had when just the nozzle, the forward closure, and with the cardboard tube as the cylinder were used. Here you will see the cardboard tube having both its ends inserted and tightly held with an epoxy glue in a ring seated on a nozzle and the forward closure. This works well with no major setback, except for the premature injection, which is now a thing of the past. This was a four second burn, and you can clearly see how the cardboard was doing in the intense heat as the regression progresses. So the need for a metal cylinder by any means necessary if reusability is to be achieved. The nozzle also went some evolutionary design upgrades. The above nozzle shape shoots out gases in a V-shaped direction and is not efficient. You want to make sure the exhaust keeps a straight path with the nozzle as it leaves the vehicle. This is achieved by gently heating the edges with a hammer resulting in the shape below for improved performance of the motor. Now, this animation shows how the unsuccessful cylinder as the combustion chamber was designed and assembled prior to firing. Notice the nozzle and the forward closure which is also the ejection device all entered inside the cylinder as opposed to them being situated outside. This was the problem. Why? Because of ignition starts and pressure mounts and all the way most of the action happens got pushed off the part of the cylinder. But this wasn't the case with the cardboard. But was the cardboard assembled set up followed? Unfortunately not. After much hand and mind activity with the data collected from the successful cardboard test emerges the final animation. This final animation shows how the combustion chamber is being imagined to be redesigned. First narrowing the whole cylinder so as to have its diameter fit tightly in both rings of the nozzle and the ejection device. Now B, the end portion of the cylinder going into the nozzle would have to be slightly bent inwards to avoid any gas escaping, but with the other end staying just that. In addition to the two upgrades, the nozzle must have four long screws welded on each end of it. Each of these screws will correspond to holes in the nozzle and in the ejection device. These screws are there to prevent the nozzle from getting pushed away like before once the nozzle are added. Now, if you are paying attention to details in this animation, the nozzle and the ejection device are all going to have to be outside the combustion chamber. This was how the cardboard was integrated to give that positive feedback. So let's bring the animated drawing to real life by making a trip to the craftsman. Showing him the model in cardboard form and with little supervision he translated it into this cylinder is currently adjusting. Then from the craftsman I moved to a car garage to make the gas weld amount. You cannot use normal high voltage welding process on this light steel material. He uses an iron rod coated with white powder called brass to solder the four pair screws at strategic points on the perimeter of the cylinder in both ends as shown here. After those successful outdoor services, heading back to OKB1 for additional components to be made and added, primarily the descending rig, I just thought about what it had you want to see at the end of the video. Remember what I said having one end of the cylinder or the combustion chamber folded inward in the animation? Here are the two opposite ends side by side. The left houses the ejection device and the right the nozzle. Having folded would restrict the exhaust within this ring. But before that, let me show you how the engine would be assembled in real time. After the propellant is loaded inside the cylinder, we then slide the nozzle in between the four back screws towards the main body as shown here. Now these screws will then find their way to the corresponding holes of the nozzle wing, which are now tightened with knots. We then repeat the same procedure for the ejection charge device on the other side of the cylinder. Now let's go ahead and do this centering stuff. But wait a second, someone already noticed the center ring during the brief assembling of the engine. 
That's right. Here is what happened. I waited the engine and I found, found out it would be getting heavier because of the thick cardboard. So I thought of using wood, which has a lot of advantage over the ladder because it will make a stronger, lighter and perfect friction with the body frame. So let's go ahead and disable some furniture. Then draw an O-ring with a tight fitting diameter to the body frame. And use the soldering iron to trim the pencil drawing. From here I'll have to make the, the center hole with the assistance of a chisel that use sandpaper to smoothen the inside. I will then use an archer to cut out the complete ring from the wood and sandpaper that too. By the way, I had to destroy nine of these old rings before arriving at these professional made ones and it took me four hours to complete each one. And because of the protruder screws and the mount of the cylinder, the motor cannot be directly inserted through the holes of the ring. So I'm going to have to split them in twos, place the motor in between them and use epoxy glue to unite them together again, which I know it will work. Alright, here is the newly completed, redesigned, updated, upgraded engine swing around revealing its vital parts. The wooden head is the second most important device to be installed in the vehicle. The center hole of it directly links to the injection charge bucket of the engine. The ropes coming out of its side directly links to the recovery device. Once installed in the lower body frame, it serves as a coupler tool for a node body frame. Its final function is to give the injection gas a focus broadcast, preventing backward flow of gases to successful deployment. So friends, let's do another horizontal test. Until then, stay safe.